Welcome back to Electrology, your go-to channel for all things electrical engineering. Today, we're diving into a captivating topic, HVDC transmission. We'll explore why it's necessary, how it works, the different configurations, compare it to high-voltage AC transmission, and discuss its disadvantages. But, you don't want to miss the exciting applications of HVDC, so be sure to watch till the end. HVDC transmission has become a necessity due to its unique advantages. It's ideal for transmitting power over extremely long distances and connecting asynchronous grids. Plus, it's efficient in reducing power losses and stabilizing electrical grids, which is essential for our modern, power-hungry world. But how does it work? We know that AC power is generated in the generating station. This should first be converted into DC. The conversion is done with the help of rectifier. The DC power will flow through the overhead lines. At the user end, this DC has to be converted into AC. For that purpose, an inverter is placed at the receiving end. Thus, there will be a rectifier terminal in one end of HVDC substation and an inverter terminal in the other end. The power of the sending end and user end will be always equal. When there are two converter stations at both ends and a single transmission line is termed as two terminal DC systems. When there are two or more converter stations and DC transmission lines is termed as multi-terminal DC substation. The components of the HVDC transmission system are converters. The AC to DC and DC to AC conversion are done by the converters. It includes transformers and valve bridges. Smoothing reactors. Each pole consists of smoothing reactors which are of inductors connected in series with the pole. It is used to avoid commutation failures occurring in inverters, reduces harmonics and avoids discontinuation of current for loads. Electrodes. They are actually conductors which are used to connect the system to the earth. Harmonic filters. It is used to minimize the harmonics in voltage and current of the converters used. DC lines. It can be cables or overhead lines. Reactive power supplies. The reactive power used by the converters could be more than 50% of the total transferred active power. So the shunt capacitors provide this reactive power. AC circuit breakers. The fault in the transformer is cleared by the circuit breakers. It also used to disconnect the DC link. HVDC comes in various configurations. There's the monopolar system, where single conductor is required and water or ground act as the return path. If the earth resistivity is high, metallic return is used. Bipolar, where double converters of same voltage rating but opposite polarity are used in each terminal. The converter junctions are grounded and homopolar, which uses a single conductor with an earth or sea return. Each has its applications, depending on the circumstances. Multi-terminal links are another fascinating aspect of HVDC. They enable the interconnection of multiple grids and power sources, fostering grid resilience and efficient resource sharing. This technology plays a pivotal role in the development of our future smart grids. Let's compare HVDC to high-voltage AC transmission. While AC is great for short distances, HVDC shines over long distances, offering lower energy losses and efficient power delivery. It's also crucial for connecting grids with different frequencies. Now, HVDC isn't without its drawbacks. The initial setup costs can be quite high, and complex converters are needed for AC to DC and DC to AC conversion. These challenges need to be addressed to fully embrace HVDC. But here's the exciting part, applications. HVDC is used in submarine power cables, interconnecting renewable energy sources, and even long distance transmission across continents. It's playing a vital role in the transition to a more sustainable and interconnected electrical world. That's a wrap on our exploration of HVDC transmission. 
I hope you found this journey through the world of electrical engineering enlightening. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss any future electrifying episodes. Thanks for tuning in to Electrology, and remember to watch till the very end to discover the electrifying possibilities of HVDC transmission.